This is Algebra Concept Exam, Concept 6 through 10 review. In uh, this first problem, all we're going to do is try to identify the steps below that illustrate or show the distributed property. And so here we go. We look at uh, step A. I see this 2x uh, minus three, or 2 times the quantity x minus 3. And that equals, in the middle here, 2x minus 6. We can see that the 2 has been distributed to the x and the 2's been distributed to the negative 3, and that gives us the 2x minus 6. So one of our answers has to be A. And then down here we see there's a 2 plus 5 with an x on the outside. If we look above, in the step above, I see a 2x plus a 5x. What we've done is we've used the distributive property in the reverse order, or backwards, to take the x out. So instead of putting a 2 in, as we did in step A, we've taken an x out to get to step D. So our final answer, for number six should be steps A and D are the steps that show the distributed property. Okay, in concept nine, solving multi-step equations, this is number two. We're gonna solve the equation uh, negative 10x plus five equals negative 15. What we should probably do here first is subtract this 5 from both sides. So we'll show that subtraction of 5. The result here is uh, negative 10x. We've just kind of uh, gotten rid of the 5. 5 minus 5 zeroes out. We need to be careful here with the signs. Negative 15 minus 5 more is a negative 20. At this point, we need to divide by this negative 10 because all I want uh, eventually on this left side is just the x. So we're going to divide the negative 10 away. And the result here is x is equal to negative 20 divided by negative 10 is 2. We can check that real quick just to make sure that we don't have an error. We can plug um, we can plug 2 in for x and see what we get. So I've got negative 10 times the 2 plus the 5 to see if that's the same as negative 15. Well, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20 plus 5 to see if that's the same as negative 15. Negative 20 plus 5 is negative 15. So negative 15 equals negative 15. This answer checks, and it can't be wrong. It has to be right. So we'll box it up and say that's our final answer. OK, question 7 here, theoretical, or actually concept 7, theoretical and experimental probability. Number 3. We roll a standard number cube, and we know that when they say standard number cube, they're really talking about what we would call a dice. We're going to try to find the probability of getting a number greater than 5. Let's see, there's two ways to do that. We can, actually, there's only one way to do that. The only number that on a dice that's greater than 5 is a 6. So there's one way to get what we're trying to get here, a number greater than 5, and there's six things that could happen. So our probability is just um, 1 sixth. And we'll go ahead and stop right there. Our next problem here has Tisha in the French club. It says there are 33 students in the club. The French teacher is going to pick six students at random to guide uh, visiting students from France. The question here is what's the probability that Tisha will not be picked as a guide? Well, so we have to think a little bit here. There are 33 students. Six of them will be picked. So how many will not be picked? Well, 33 minus 6 would be 27 students who don't get picked. So that's, that's the number of students that will not be picked, divided by the total number of students possible to pick from. That's 33. Let's see, I know it's 27 and 33 have uh, common factors of 3. So we'll go ahead and reduce that down, divide it out. 27 divided by 3 is uh, 9 and 33 divided by 3 is 11. So our final answer here will be 9 elevenths. Okay, moving on here to concept 8, number 5. Suppose, suppose uh, we choose a marble from a bag that has 4 red marbles, 3 white marbles, and 7 blue marbles. We return the first marble to the bag and then choose again. So we will return that first marble. Find the probability of a red and a blue. So we're going to draw a red marble and a blue marble out of the bag. So let's see. 
the probability of a red. We have 4 and 3 is 7 plus 7 more is 14. So the probability of drawing a red marble is 4 out of 14 times the probability after you put that marble back, because it says we turn, return the first marble, and drawing a blue is going to be 7 out of 14. Now again, see we can do some reducing here. 2 goes into 4 and 14. So we can reduce that down to 2 sevenths. Actually, let's do that. Let's do that over here. Let's knock that down to 2 sevenths over here. Because I think some good things are going to happen when we do that. So we'll knock this down to 2. We'll knock this down to 7. And notice here that the 7 and the 7 can actually reduce. So we'll take those down. So we get a 1 and a 1. And also the 2 and the 14 can reduce. So we're down to 1 times 1 in the numerator over 1 times 7, that's a 1, in the denominator. So we get a probability of 1 7th. We're going to go ahead and rewrite that, 1 7th. And let's go ahead and box that up. That's our final answer. Okay, up to number 6 here. We've got a basket with 15 pieces of fruit, 7 apples, 5 oranges, and 3 bananas. Jonas will take a piece of fruit at random from the basket, and then Beth will take a piece of fruit at random. What's the probability that Jonas will get an orange, and then Beth will get an apple? Now notice Jonas did not put that orange back, so we need to take that into account. So the probability that we'll draw an orange first is 5 out of the total 15 times, once that's gone, there's only 14 pieces of fruit left, the probability that uh, Beth will pull an apple is 7 out of 14. Let's go ahead and reduce here. 5 fifteenths, so that'll reduce to 1 third. 5 goes into itself one time and into 15 three times. Times, if we go ahead and reduce the 7 fourteenths, we should recognize that as 1 half. So 1 third times 1 half is 1 sixth. So the probability that uh, Jonas will draw an orange and then Beth will draw an apple is one-sixth. That's our final answer. And our final question on this exam, equations with variables on both sides, concept 10, says first find the value of A and then find the value of the marked angles. Well, we should recognize this as vertical angles and we should know that vertical angles are congruent, which means they have the same measure. So these two angles have the same measure, which means that for um, A plus 12 has to be the same as 3A plus 32. If we subtract 3A from both sides, we've got variables on both sides, so let's just get them all on one side here just by doing a little subtraction. We find that A plus 12 is the same as 32. And then we go ahead and subtract that 12 away from both sides. And that will isolate our A, which is what we're supposed to do. The first thing is to find the value of A. A is equal to 32 minus 12, or 20. If A is 20, then I should be able to plug uh, 20 in for A in either of these, actually both of these angles, and get the same value. So let's check that out. 3 times 20 would be 60 plus 32 is 92. So we're looking at 92 degrees. And here, 4 times 20 is 80 plus 12 is also 92 degrees. So I just need to make sure I show my answers. I got 92 degrees for part B, and I got A equals 20 for part A. And we're good. Final answer.